Every crypto cycle has seen the completion of a five wave structure. And so far, this cycle is behaving exactly the same. Human nature never changes, which also means that each wave carries with it very similar characteristics and behavior. Unfortunately, the masses or new money are typically two steps behind. So having an idea of where we sit in the macro cycle can give us a massive edge. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how I'm seeing the market and what is potentially coming up next in the fourth and fifth waves of the bull market. And you'll also walk away with a solid understanding of market structure, Elliott wave theory, and some of the psychology that takes place at each part of the move. But before we dive into the charts, please remember that I'm not a financial advisor. So always do your own due diligence and research and past results are not indicative of future performance. And if you want more from us in TIA crypto, hit that link at the top of the video description. You get free weekly reports. We cover, of course, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, altcoins, and the most important market in the world, the land market and the economic and real estate cycle. Now, before we get to the current cycle, how I see it playing out where I think we are and what's potentially coming up next. We'll have a quick refresher on the Elliott wave theory, how it works, how to put together an accurate wave count so we can really pinpoint where we are. We're not getting confused with what stage of the cycle we're at, or at least the odds are further in our favor that we're in the right stage of the cycle. So I'm gonna be going back to the previous bull market so you can see how it works and then we can put the pieces back together. Now it's really, really surprising how many people, even gurus online, still get the wave count wrong. It's incredibly simple. There's only three rules you must adhere to, which I'll go through in just a moment, to get an accurate wave count, whereas some people still break those rules and they just get mixed up with where they are in the cycle. Now, rule number one is that wave two must not go below the beginning of wave one. So you can see I've got a few different counts here with different colors. There are cycles within cycles, which I'll get to in a moment, but we're just paying attention now to the yellow cycle being the major cycle. So rule one is that wave two must not go beneath the start of wave one one. So any correction above the start of there can be a wave two. Now, rule two is that wave three must not be the shortest wave. It doesn't have to be the longest, but it must not be the shortest wave. Very, very simple stuff. And then finally, rule three is that wave four must not go into any vicinity of wave one. So you can see this is the peak of wave one. If we draw a horizontal line, wave four must not go beneath the peak of wave one, otherwise it's an invalid count. So they're the three rules. I'll just go through them again really quickly. Wave two must finish above wave one. Wave three must not be the shortest. And wave four must not go into the vicinity of wave one. That's all there is to it, but people still get it wrong. The most common thing people get wrong is they'll draw a wave four, which actually goes into the vicinity of wave one. Now, like I said before, there are waves within waves or cycles within cycles, and the rules still must be adhered to to get an accurate substructure. Now, what we're looking at here with these different colors are waves within waves. So you can see we have the yellow one, two, three, four, five. Then within each of these waves, we should also see breakdowns of those same substructures or fractals or however you want to look at it. But essentially here, this wave three should also break down into a five wave structure, which is what I've got in green. So you can see another one, two, three, four, five. And what I'll actually do is just get a different color so you can see a little bit more clearly what we're talking about. So now we're analyzing wave three and we're looking at the substructure of wave three to make sure we're still following all of the Elliott wave principles, the rules. So you can see in green, we have one, two, three, four, five. And just to check we're following the rules, wave two did not go beneath wave one. Wave three is not the shortest wave and wave four did not breach wave one. Now you can keep taking this closer and closer to the market, whether you're looking at macro cycles or short-term cycles, but you can see wave three, which is in green, we can also break this down into a five wave structure, which I have in orange, one, two, three, four, five. And that's the end of that in terms of the waves within waves. But when we're looking at the macro stuff, of course, we're focusing on the macro cycle, the big picture waves, but we still wanna make sure the substructures meet the rules to increase the chance we're following an accurate wave count. Because as we'll get to in a moment, when we're looking at the current cycle, we can start to really pull apart where we're sitting. Now, it's not about trying to pick the exact peaks and troughs. It's about getting an idea of where we sit in the market structure or in the market cycle to see what the psychology is typically doing. Because like I said previously, each wave or each structure has very, very similar psychology attached to it. And for a recent example, typically in wave 
two is when it's the most fearful, not at the actual bottom, at wave two. If you think about what was taking place at this time, we had the banking crisis. Everybody was still thinking that the market was going to be falling apart, yet that was one of the most bullish times to be in the cycle, apart from the low itself. But when we're looking at the actual psychology, people were definitely more bearish in this period here than they were at the actual lows. Now, like I also mentioned in the introduction, the masses or new money are typically two steps behind. And this is something I shared at the time when we're looking at the overall crypto cycle. I was saying that this was a time to be most bullish, whereas most people won't get bullish until we start to break the top and continue higher. Now, that's exactly what we've seen, but we're really yet to see the new money come in, which typically happens in wave five. Now, we are starting to see some new money come back into the space, but I don't really think we've seen the flood of new money yet. But in terms of being behind the market, most people that have stuck around through the bear market and were crypto enthusiasts or whatever else really were only starting to get bullish around the previous top when we had the ETF and in this move here when of course they're two steps behind they should have been bullish through this period here. Now in addition to the rules the three golden rules to make up an accurate wave structure there are a number of guidelines as well. Now these guidelines don't have to happen to make for an accurate wave count but they're just good to keep in mind because they do happen fairly frequently and one of those rules is the rule of alternation or to put it simply how the correct Corrections look. One correction will typically be drawn out and the other correction will typically be sharp. Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about the corrections, I'm talking about the even wave counts, waves two and wave four. And you can see in this structure here, wave two was a bit more of a sideways or complex correction, whereas wave four was a sharp correction. So that's really meeting the guideline which Elliott Wave set out for us. So once again, while it isn't a hard and fast rule, it is something that happens fairly frequently. I'm gonna show you some more examples of that as well. So just to recap, the guideline of alternation is in relation to the corrections. One correction will typically be a little bit more complicated or sideways, the other correction will typically be quite sharp. Now this guideline can flip. Sometimes you'll see a very sharp wave two and then a complex or sideways wave four. But the real advantage of this guideline here when it plays out is that when we see what wave two is, we can have an idea of what wave four is gonna look like, which will be very important when we're looking at the current cycle in this chart here, because we've already had our wave two. So, so far we've looked at the wave structure, the three golden rules, one of the guidelines and really mapped it out for that first cycle. But let's see if it played out again in the next cycle. Now, immediately what you should be able to see is that wave two and wave four, that guideline I just spoke about, whereas one will typically be a little bit more drawn out or a bit uglier if you want to put it that way. And then the other correction will be a bit sharper and cleaner. So the guideline also fit the bill in this case here. But just to take another step back to the golden rules, the three golden rules, you can see we had wave one out of the bear market bottom. Most people are still very confused in this wave, thinking it's just a bear market rally when really it's the first impulsive or bullish wave in the new cycle, but most people are still very, very confused. I think it's a bear market rally. This time has been no different where they thought this was a bear market rally in this move here. But of course, they were wrong once again. It was not a bear market rally. It was the first leg in a bull market. But just a step back to these rules here, you can see that wave two did not go beneath the start of wave one. So that's a check for rule one. Rule two is that wave three cannot be the shortest wave. It doesn't have to be the longest, but it cannot be the shortest. And you can see this is most definitely longer than wave five and also longer than wave one. Now that is typically true of both time and also price. So you can measure the price range and you can measure the time frame. And typically wave three will be the longest. It just can't be the shortest. So that's a tick for this rule here. That's a tick for wave three. And then the third and final rule is that wave four cannot go beneath the peak of wave one. Now in the situation situations I've shown you here, you can see there's been quite a gap between the bottom of wave four and the top of wave one. But sometimes you can get the market correct quite a lot, which can be really, really good buy signals because provided it doesn't actually touch the peak of wave one and we start to see changes in trend, you can get in very close to the end of a correction before that fifth and final wave does go up. So yet again, you can see the completion of a five wave structure in the previous cycle. That time was no different. And I do suspect that this time here will be exactly the same and that we'll get a completion of another five wave structure. We'll have more on that in just a moment. But just to take it back to the previous cycle, that's what gave me a lot of confidence to buy in around the low of this move here. While we'd seen a 50 to 60% correction in the market, we hadn't 
haven't seen the completion of a five wave structure yet, which obviously tipped the odds in favor of another move up before getting the end of the cycle. But as you can also see that I've marked up on the chart here, we do have waves within waves to really validate the wave count. So this is wave three in yellow. We should be able to see a substructure breaking down the five wave pattern, or at least five waves within the impulsive wave to further validate we're in an accurate wave count. So you can see in green, we have yet another one, two, three, four, five. And then within wave three from here, we also have a one, two, three, four, five in orange. Now you should also see impulsive waves and corrective waves within the substructure. Again, I'm not gonna go into that much granular detail but I'm sure you're starting to get the point. But if you do want more detail into the intricacies of the psychology, how I treat this with my trading, trading different parts of the wave, check us out in TIA Crypto. I have an Elliott Wave course contained within TIA Premium Membership. So if you do want more, there is more information there. But looking back at this previous cycle, you can see how we did conform to the rules. The guideline also played out very nicely where we had a bit of a complex correction and then we had a sharp correction to showing that guideline of alternation. In this case here, it was actually the same as the previous cycle in that wave two was a little bit more ugly and wave four was the sharp move. And of course, in just a moment, I'm going to go through the current cycle and what I believe is coming up for wave four as well. But just to really wrap up this previous cycle, you can just start to see how the rules and guidelines play out time and time again. The psychology is very similar. Most people were getting bullish after the market was already busting out to fresh highs. New money was piling in in this move here, being two steps behind the market. And it just happens time and time again. Now to bring it to the current cycle and how this has been playing out. And as I've been covering on the channel and both with the members, it's been playing out basically to a T. Now I can't reiterate enough that it's not about trying to pick the exact turning points of the market. This is to do with market structure, market psychology to make sure we're still conforming to a bullish pattern. And so far we haven't had any breakdowns of this pattern. The challenge can be if you're trying to really pinpoint short-term trading signals off a macro cycle is that you just don't know where the peaks and troughs of these impulsive and corrective waves are gonna be. So it is always a bit of a moving target, but in terms of the structure itself, that does remain relatively fixed or at least the rules never change so we can have a very good idea on what may be coming up around the corner once we get those confirmation signals so to take a quick look at the current wave structure where we are you can clearly see we had a wave one up everybody was calling this a bear market correction whereas we knew a bear market rally is always the first leg in a bull market and we were very confident that the cycle would actually turn so we did get that confirmation we had the wave one then we had a wave two which happened to be a bit more of a sideways or you know ugly correction in the market it wasn't a clean move it was very choppy and churny and it did take a long time to get down to the end of that wave two. So if we are considering the guideline of alternation, that would suggest that wave four, wherever it does begin from, would be a sharp correction as opposed to a drawn out slow correction. And if you think about how the market has been behaving lately with how much volatility and strength there's been, it would not be surprising to see this guideline play out once again. The market just keeps moving wherever we get this top. If it's now or not, it doesn't really matter. But when the market does reverse, if we do see a sharp correction and we start to trend up higher, that would give us confidence that the guideline is playing out yet again. That's the end of the correction. And then we're getting ready for the fifth and final wave of the bull market. So, so far in terms of the Elliott wave rules, we definitely are conforming to them so far. We have wave one, wave two did not breach the low of wave one. Wave three will not be the shortest wave already because of course it's already longer than wave one. So the only thing that we have to look out for now in terms of meeting the criteria for all three rules is if and when we get a correction, the price cannot come back beneath the top of wave one, which is of course absolutely insane. If you think about it, the market falls that far. It's obviously putting in quite a lot of damage, but just to do with the rules and Elliott wave structure, technically speaking, the market could fall all the way back to around this price and then still continue up for a fifth and final wave break into fresh highs. That's just using this one type of analysis alone, looking at the three specific rules. Now, again, I'm not saying that's what will happen. We're simply just looking at the rules based on Elliott wave theory. But to keep it very, very simple, two out of three rules are already conformed to. We just have to wait and see in terms of this next correction, how it does play out. And if we are gonna be seeing a sharp correction, which is what the guideline would suggest. Now, something else I've also alluded to is that commodities behave differently to shares. Now, what does that have to do with crypto? Well, of course, when the Elliott Wave theory was put together to do with market psychology and market structure, there was no cryptocurrency. This analysis was used on stocks and commodities. And typically what we saw with stocks is that the third wave was the longest and strongest, but commodities do behave a bit differently in that it's the fifth wave that often goes over the top and we see a massive extension in that fifth wave. So the fifth wave is often the longest and strongest, not the third. So if we are treating Bitcoin as 
as digital gold and thereby a commodity, it would suggest that we have the potential of seeing a massive move in wave five. We've already seen an enormous move in wave three, but for a big bit of hoping for everyone, the most bullish period could still be ahead of us in this wave five if we do see cryptocurrency or Bitcoin behaving like a commodity, which means wave five would be the massive blow off move far exceeding what we've already seen in this wave three. Now, I'm not saying that's what will happen. I'm just saying it is a possibility, especially if cryptocurrency or Bitcoin does take on the framework or the structure of a typical commodity. And with how far and fast crypto has already moved in this current cycle, it's definitely not outside the realm of possibilities. Now, I haven't spoken much about what comes up after wave five, but it really should come as no surprise. After wave five is when we get the bear market. And I am anticipating that this next bear market is gonna be the worst one in crypto's history. Crypto is yet to see a secular bear market lasting more than one year, and it will happen at some point. And I do suspect at the end of this cycle, this is when we will see a multi-year bear market, far worse than anything else we've seen. There's no point getting too carried away about that yet. We're yet to even see wave four and the next wave five if this structure continues to play ball. But of course, I'm gonna to continue to track this really closely for you in the channel, and hopefully we'll be very prepared more than two steps ahead of everyone else. Now, in this video, I've only been talking about the macro cycle and the big picture ways. But if you are trading short term, it's still very important to have a good grasp on what the macro cycle is doing. And when you are really looking at the substructures, you can know where you're trading. You can know what wave you're trading within and what to expect. So for example, now we're in the wave five of a wave three, suggesting at some point we will get the peak come about and we will see a correction. So once we do start to see signs that the market is breaking down and we are in a correction, which we're not in yet, our trends are still up. You can have a bit of an insight that the long trades within that period may be short lived and there may be a little bit more down side before finally rounding out and getting onto that next move. Now, once again, if you want more detail into the psychology in each part of the cycle and how I treat the signals, take a look at TIA Premium. In addition to the Elliott Wave course, we have a bunch of other courses, trading strategies, and a whole heap more. But enough of the shill, that's what we're looking at in terms of the Elliott Wave cycle, the cycles within cycles, the macro wave structure, and how I still believe we will see the completion of a wave five structure before the end of this bull market. And for a big bit of hopium, if Bitcoin is taking on the role as digital gold and a commodity, the best times may still be ahead of us. So that's all I've got for you in today's macro update where we looked at Elliott Wave structure, a bit of psychology as well. If you want more from us in TIA Crypto, there's a link at the top of the video description. That's it from me today. Wishing you more health, wealth, and happiness. And until next time, I'll catch you then.